Hi everybody, very welcome to Mentor and yet another video podcast. As always, I hope you're doing absolutely fantastic. Today, I have some really exciting news coming out of Airbus Industries. This Monday, Monday the 21st of September, they came out with a press conference announcing a new energy source for their future aircraft. And also, they had three different concept aircraft that they wanted to show us up. What this new energy source is and why that makes me so excited and happy is what I'm going to talk about today, so stay tuned. Wind 31016, everyone right, everyone right. Hi guys, before we start today's episode, and I'm really excited about this one, I just wanted to let you know that me and Sandra are working on this year's little giveaway to our Patreons. This is something that we do every year to show the appreciation for all of the support that my Patreon crew is giving me. And if you would consider to join my Patreon crew up until the end of October, we will send the same gift out to you. Just make sure that you update your shipping address in your Patreon profile. And of course, you will get access to all of the other perks like access to my Discord server and the other things. So if you use the link up here, you can check it out to see if it's something for you. And for those of you who are already my patrons, a huge thank you for your ongoing support. Now on today's episode. All right, guys, any one of you who has been following me either on Twitter or on Facebook or here on the YouTube channel knows that I am very passionate about the future of aviation and particularly how we can continue with the aviation that I love, but in a more environmentally responsible way. So I have been looking into electric aircraft, I've uh, been looking into the way that battery technology has been rising during the last few years, but something that I have that's been nagging me, really nagging me, is that no matter how I look at it, I can't see the battery technology that we have today and within the foreseeable future being able to be used in aircraft that flies longer routes. You know, flying short medium haul, potentially with battery, medium to long haul, no. Yeah, it just does not work, at least not with existing technologies. And that has made me think, you know, what is the future of aviation? Will we be able to continue to travel the way that we, the humanity, have learned to do during the last few decades? And this is why the announcement on Monday from Airbus made me so excited. Because what Airbus went out and said was basically they see the problem of global warming. They know that we, the aviation industry, need to start paying attention to this. We need to start looking into the future and what we can do in order to make aviation more sustainable. And their answer to that question was hydrogen. Okay, hydrogen. Using hydrogen gas as the energy source for aviation in order for us to move into the future. Now you might ask, hydrogen? I mean, we have been talking about hydrogen for decades. How come that, that this is not already the case if that was such a good thing to use? And that's a good question. And the answer to that is really just need, okay? There are some fundamental challenges that is involved with moving from fossil fuels into hydrogen. A lot of it has to do with the technology surrounding aircraft, but the major problem is going to be infrastructure, be actually pr the production of massive amounts of hydrogen gas, the transportation of that, uh, how to actually put it onto the aircraft, as in fueling procedures, safety procedures, all of that. These are some challenges that will be needed to be taken into account now. And that is going to need the cooperation of governments, of uh, research institutes, of the industry, of aircraft manufacturers like Airbus and Boeing. So all of them have to come together. And there's not really been a need for that. You know, we've had fossil fuels. It's been able to, to kind of get us where we want. But the fact is that even though fossil fuels was a really good pony, it just cannot get us any further, right? We cannot continue to ride fossil fuels anymore. And that has been made abundantly clear during the last decade. So, how can we use hydrogen then? 
Well, it turns out that you can use hydrogen as an energy source in three different ways. Either you can use it as a, as a fuel cell. All right? That means that you're using the hydrogen gas, you are converting it into electricity, which we're using to run electric motors. The second is that you can use the hydrogen in existing gas turbines. So this means the engines that we already have fitted, the jet engines that we're using on our aircraft today, can be converted to burn hydrogen rather than um, fossil fuels. Now, granted, there's going to be some changes needed to the fuel system, to the injectors and to the burn chambers and some other modifications as well. But the fact is that existing engines can actually run on hydrogen. And this is a really important part. The third way is something called synthetic fuel. That's when you use hydrogen, you combine it with CO2, and you get essentially the kind of fuel that we're already running the engines on, and you can use it without any kind of changes. However, that is slightly more complicated. Now, hydrogen is not just like magically going to appear inside of the aircraft because Hydrogen is a gas and we need it in order to get the kind of volumes of that gas we need in order to fuel an aircraft for longer flights, you're going to need to have it in its liquid form. Hydrogen in its liquid form is minus 253 Celsius. Okay, so that's called cryogenics and cryogenics is complicated. You are going to need a certain type of fuel cell or a fuel tank. Uh, it's a perfect fuel tank would be round in shape, um, but obviously that you cannot put inside of the wings of the aircraft, so you're gonna have to store it somewhere else. But the benefit is also that even though you have the same kind of energy in hydrogen, it, it weighs about one third of what uh, fossil fuels do. So that means that there is a possibility to move the fuel tank out of the wings, which is sitting over the center of gravity, and move it into a different part of the aircraft because of the lower weight. But on the other hand, the weight will also increase because you need to insulate that fuel tank in order to maintain that extremely low temperature for the fuel. So as you can see, there are some real technological issues here, but they can be overcome. This is the, the, the point I want to make here. This is doable. This is not science fiction. This is something that we can do, that we're actually doing. We're using it in forklifts, for example, inside of buildings today. We're use, we can use it in trains. We can use it in many different forms. And there are already gas turbines running on uh, hydrogen as we speak today. So the know-how is there, technology is there. Now we just have to get it into an aircraft. And this is where these three different prototypes, not prototypes, more um, concept aircraft came in. So I really want to emphasize here that what Airbus did was they showed three different aircraft and these are not something that you can expect as products. These are just concepts and that's because Airbus is going to need to go out to the industry and they're going to have to see where is the product fit, you know, what does the market actually want. So the first they showed, the first concept they showed was a turboprop aircraft. It looks a little bit like an ATR-72 or a um, Bombardier Dash Q400. And even though it looks very similar to um, aircraft that you've already seen, you can see that the aft part of the aircraft doesn't have any windows. And that's because that's where Airbus is thinking about putting this fuel tank. Okay, remember that it's much lighter, so you can actually put it that far behind the center of gravity but it's going to come with some trade-offs. Now, in that case, it would be running um, the engines, basically the uh, turbine engines on the hydrogen gas, but also include an electrical engine component into uh, these engines. Now, exactly how they were going to do this, they didn't go into in detail, uh, but there is, I've linked to uh, a friend of mine, actually, Bjorn Korner, um, which has done some really, really good articles about this subject and how you could use electrical motors on turbine aircraft or turbine engines in order to make them more efficient. So go and check out Bjorn's link below. Anyway, that aircraft would carry approximately 100 passengers for up to about 1,000 nautical miles. So that will take care of most of the short haul market. 
The second uh, concept aircraft that they showed off is something that looks very similar to what the kind of Airbus 320 or Airbus 220 that we're seeing today. This is a turbofan aircraft and once again it will be using the hydrogen by uh, burning uh, the hydrogen gas in a converted gas turbine and also to a certain extent the uh, uh, fuel cell electricity for the electric motors. Once again you can see that the back of the aircraft doesn't have any windows that's where the uh, fuel tank will be and on this one if you look at the um, vertical stabilizer the fin you'll see that there is a little drainage what looks like a drainage mast on the top and that would be a type of ventilation in case there would be for example a, a leak a gas leak from the tank you need to be able to ventilate that out one way or another so that's what that is this aircraft would have a capacity of about 120 to 200 passengers and about 2000 nautical miles so now we're talking some quite good range like medium range for an aircraft but the third concept is where it starts looking really futuristic so this is uh, airbus blended wing concept remember i did a video about the maverick the uh, kind of scale model that uh, airbus was flying just a few months back i when I saw that one, I didn't really understand what they were up to. Like, I could see the benefits of improved aerodynamics with it, sure. But I couldn't see how it would be worth to kind of change infrastructure on airports and stuff in order to accommodate an aircraft that would have such a radical different design just to save a little bit on aerodynamics. But now, my friends, now it makes sense. Because the Maverick, which is complete concept, I have to really stress that, because of its shape and the fact that it is much thicker and the fact of where you would be putting the engine which is towards the back of the aircraft would be much more suitable to hold hydrogen tanks so if you have an aircraft like that it you it will allow the airbus engineers much more flexibility in how to store the hydrogen how to store the passengers and cargo while also gaining in aerodynamics so what I took out of that show was basically that Airbus is really committed to this, right? They're really looking into the possibility of taking on board this technology and using it. Their timeline is that they would use the next five years to kind of weed out and decide on a specific technology. And during that time also come up with a concept aircraft, right? Not a concept, but an actual demonstrator. And then 2025, that's where they put a deadline for having the demonstrator ready and hopefully airborne in order to get this aircraft certified and into the market by 2035. All right, I can hear you, all of you out there saying that, well, that's 15 years uh, away, that's a lifetime away. But the fact is that 15 years is actually just around the corner when it comes to aviation. To get something certified in only 15 years, a completely new technology is very, very ambitious and it's extremely good that that happens right now. What? What's that? Hydrogen is not really good for the environment? Is that what I'm hearing? Yes, I know that that discussion has come and Airbus is well aware of the fact that at the moment to actually get hydrogen gas out and use it uh, is very um, energy critical. Like you need a lot of energy in order to, to, to get the hydrogen out of water, which is what you tend to do. And if you're going to be using fossil fuels or coal in order to get that hydrogen done, then of course there's no net gain. And this is why Airbus was very, very clear when they came out with the press release saying that this technology would be built on the fact that you only use reusable energy sources to extract the hydrogen. And if you think about it, there are loads of ways that this could be done. You could be using solar power. You could be using wind power, you can be using uh, hydropower, as in dams. But you can also, in the future, be using, for example, um, nuclear, small nuclear power plants out in the sea that could be cr producing the hydrogen gas needed well away from anywhere where it could be um, da a danger to anyone over the sea, and then use ships to kind of move the hydrogen around. All right? There is a lot of possibilities where you don't have to use fossil fuels to create the hydrogen. And that is what Airbus is talking about. 
But there's no question about it, guys. In order for this to work, there's going to need to be a cooperation between Airbus, between Boeing, between all of the um, manufacturers, engine manufacturers. The industry is going to need to, to really indicate that they want this. All of the governments around the world are going to have to start making the change over to hydrogen. They're going to have to build the infrastructure, and make it more likely, more doable to do this. So this is a huge undertaking, but like I said in the beginning of the video, it is time to change ponies, guys. And this is why I am so excited about this, because this is what I've been waiting for. I've been waiting for a major player like Airbus to come out and first of all face the problem and also come with a solution. And you can be absolutely sure that when Airbus comes and they say something like this, this is not just taken out of thin air. This is likely years in preparation, in studies in seeing that it is actually doable to do it that way, to use this technology. And if that's the case, it means that not only are we going to be able to change over aviation potentially over to, um, to a new energy source which is not reliable on fossil fuels, if that happens, a lot of other industries will be able to follow and we might finally be onto something. Airbus was in the press release saying that they're hoping that this technology is going to reduce the carbon footprint of aviation as a whole with 50% initially. Uh, but I am hoping that as this technology evolves, as we start building different aircraft, like for example the blended wing concept, and that we can make the aircraft bigger, be able to take even more hydrogen and, and completely use this new technology. So. Guys, if you didn't notice it, this is why I'm excited. This makes me really happy because I can see this as a potential way forward. And I don't know, what do you think? I would love to hear what you think about this. Put your comments into the description below and also leave a like on the video. And if you think that I deserve it, subscribe to the channel and highlight the little notification bell. If you do that, you will be notified when I do live streams or when I put spontaneous videos out and you won't miss anything. Have an absolutely fantastic day wherever you are and I'll see you next time. Bye bye. Right guys, I really hope that you liked that. If you want more content like that, more aviation content, well then check this out. Uh, I hope that you have subscribed to the channel and that you've highlighted the little notification bell. See you inside of the Mentor Aviation app and have an absolutely fantastic day. Bye-bye.